In this video, I would like to do a, a short overview of the Stack AI Composer. So the Stack AI Composer, you can really compare with Flowwise and um, Langflow. Uh, Flowwise and Langflow both are um, built on Langchain and both are open sourced. And I would say the, the third product that's the, the closest to those two is Chainforge. Even though Chainforge's focus is on um, test testing prompt engineering and version testing from engineered prompts, um, it's still a design canvas approach to building um, LLM-based um, flows from chaining. Um, Stack AI is not open source. It's a hosted solution. It's got more of an enterprise um, focus a paid service, and you do see refinement um, within the Stack AI environment. So if here I've got a chain of thought um, chatbot, um, so it's one of the templates that's available. So if you go to projects, you can create a new project. Your existing projects will be listed here, and you've got some templates. Um, it looks limited, but the templates are really good. Um, and then if you go, you can create a simple chatbot, a chain of thought chatbot, um, and more. So if, go, if I go back to my projects and I open my chain of thought project, um, so here you see I have an input and an output, and I've got two open AI um, connectors here. If I go to properties, I can set my um, model here um, and also I can set memory so there are quite a few things that happens under the hood with stack AI um, one of those uh, is managing conversational context so normally you need to manage conversational context yourself within the application and often that that's accomplished by um, incorporating recent conversational history in the prompt uh, so what's interesting with Stack AI, they encrypt the messages as far as I understand, and they send the messages to a database and they manage conversational context um, for you. Um, then towards the bottom, you can also add your API key. Um, a second thing I find interesting about um, Stack AI, their composer, is that um, there is no a notion or definition of agents. So with Langchain and also with Haystack agents, uh, Haystack, um, um, yes, Haystack agents, there's this, this strong idea of creating an autonomous agent. So what I found is interesting with Stack AI, they don't have a defined, um, a defined entity or design component called an agent. But considering um, this example, in terms of, um, you know, as I mentioned, Stack AI doing things under the hood, you will see here that I've got a, um, this is a screenshot of a, um, a chain of thought um, chatbot I built within Stack AI. And you'll see here, I asked a very difficult question. So this is normally a question that an agent would, would need to decompose by chain of thought reasoning. So the question is, what is the square root of the year of birth of the man generally considered as the father of the iPhone? And so uh, within Stack AI, I didn't have any, there's no agent defined, and there's no special components like math or calculator involved. And here you can see the, the breakdown um, which the, the Stack AI agent gave me. So this stack AI, AI um, agent only had four components and you'll see the breakdown is thorough and it's really reminiscent of, of how a so-called agent would handle this, this query. So this is an article I wrote that's on Medium and I'll put a link in the comments to, um, to this article where I just break down some of the comparisons between um, flow flow wise lang flow and chain forge and some of the advantages i saw uh, in terms of of the approach um, 
the stack AI composer is taking. So just looking at the refinement of, of this whole design development canvas, um, you can play your, um, um, your flow out um, and see how the flow progresses. So I can add a, um, a question here, what is an interest rate? And when I press play here, the, the whole flow is executed um, and the output is shown here in the output window. So that's a very convenient way of debugging um, a, an application. So there's my description, it popped up there and it shows me the amount of tokens used. Um, so this is a very convenient way of testing the flow and, and seeing where there might be a problem. There's also a history option with uh, snapshots is, are taken of the application. Um, and I can go back to a previous version. And something else that's also interesting is this evaluate button. Um, and within, within the article, I've got a screenshot of the evaluate interface. And basically it gives me the input and the output and I'm able to add comments um, for, you know, to ground truth the completion uh, of the prompt response. Again, the, the, the design canvas is really refined. Um, for instance, if I go to logic and I drop the router component here, um, you will see it gives me um, a breakdown of uh, there's an input for con content, there's an input for condition, um, and it defines the two outputs there as well. So I really found that the interface is really refined and it gives you a good explanation of, of what the course of action should be. And again, the many of the, the, the legwork is done under the hood. So I found with um, Flowwise and, and Langflow, you really had to build out the flow in a very granular, granular basis, which is not the, the case with, um, with Stack AI. And then just lastly, there's quite a bit of focus um, I would say there are four focus points um, in the Stack AI Composer. The one is large language models. Um, so obviously Google and Huggy Face uh, will be added uh, shortly. There's focus on the loading of, of data um, and then also semantic search to, to search, to have like a vector database or a vector store where you can perform semantic search on and find data that's semantically similar. Um, there's quite a bit of tools as well in terms of API connection. And again, text search and document search. So quite a bit of focus on, on semantic search, vector databases, loading documents and being able to, to parse and, and search through um, search through those documents.